thought you just had to take a nice layer of dust off this thing. But this is the start of a brand new series. I guess really the first official series that I have on the second channel. I guess kind of inspired by MKBHD. I am going to be USB seeing all the things. It's really more inspired by Natalie the Nerd because honestly her USB-C videos with like the Vita and the PSP have been blowing up lately. And not only do I wanna cash in on that, but now that I live in an apartment, I have a lot less space and I also have to, you know, share the space with another person. So I can't just have all of my consoles out like I used to. And while I don't want to get rid of too many of my consoles. I want to make it easier for me to pull out a console at any given point. And this contradicts what I used to say. And I, I still agree with my past self that I would rather just have my RetroTink upscaler and then plug things into that where I can instead of HDMI mods. But my goal with this series and other videos on the main channel is to mod a bunch of my consoles to, to have USB-C for power and to have an HDMI out. A lot of the consoles that I have already have HDMI out. And I even have some consoles like my mini consoles that I'm staring at on the floor over here that have like micro USB or like the original Xbox and most of the PlayStations have like standard power cords for at least the US. So I'm not too worried about that, but if it's proprietary like the Wii U gamepad or the Wii and Wii U that have their proprietary bricks, the GameCube, pretty much every Nintendo handheld and every other handheld that other than the Switch, pretty much everything does not use USB-C or anything that is standard. So I'm going to be adding USB-C to a lot of things in the future, and I'm sorry if you just want to see this and I'm rambling, but that's the goal with this series. So I have actually a lot, that's what this is here. I have a lot of Giltessa USB-C mods that I am very excited to get to. I will link Giltessa's website down below. Like genuinely affordable pricing. This is not sponsored in any way, shape or form, but before I've even used a single one of them, I am super, super impressed. Because he's got things for the NES, SNES, all of the 3DS and 2DS models, the Vita, the PSP, the freaking Wii U gamepad, man. I got a couple GameCube ones. I got a couple Wii ones, which the Wii and the Wii U will work either way. And then I have some like generic micro USB to USB-C ones that I'm excited to do. And again, one of these things, because obviously... Not all USB-Cs are created equal. I want them all to be power delivery capable. And I believe if I if they don't, I'm going to be a little sad. But I believe every single one of these can use power delivery. So I can use the same cord and brick for every single one of those mods that I just showed you. And that gets me super hyped. So we're going to start with the Wii U gamepad of all things. And that's mostly because I think it's funny, but also I've tried to do this before. Uh, this does not work. I have like a bag of two prong USB-C ports. It's easy, but that doesn't allow for power delivery. So I have to use a small five volt one amp brick to charge this stuff. I can't do a C to C cord. So especially since this doesn't work, I'm glad to be changing this out. But either I fried it, which I really hope I didn't, or I just have this feeling that the positive and negative are swapped for some reason, but I feel like that shouldn't affect this. I don't know. But this guy right here will help us get USB-C on the Wii U gamepad. And I'm super hyped for that. I'm going to scan this QR code real quick because that is our guide. That's that's not a guide. This is the listing. Oh, there we go. You have to just scroll through the listing to find the uh, written tutorial, but should be able to open this. Oh, okay, you can still open the, the bag. It's a little tough, but that's fine. Okay, cool. Very simple. It should literally just be two pads. Cool. Get out the iFixit toolkit here. We can use a Philips zero bit. Remove the battery. Boom. And then we've got 10 screws to remove. I don't think I'm going to worry about placing these uh, screw covers back, honestly. 
Okay. They're tri wings, of course. Why wouldn't they be? Oh my gosh. Just get in. Did I not grab a tri wing? No, that's a tri wing. Okay, we'll get this one first then. Why was that so hard? Oh my gosh. Another one. Okay, it's going smoother now. Oh, maybe. Uh, there we go. Okay, cool. Oh, that one's going to be too uh, mean. Those two down here. And I can get this one, but I don't have a tri wing. I need a, a skinny tri wing screwdriver. Thank God. I. <laughs> I get so many of these things in and I throw so many of them away, but I do have one of uh, Phillips and the tri-wing ones for specific reasons like this. Get that one and this one. Okay, and then hopefully, boom. Oh, it's possible that I never plugged this thing back in and that's why it didn't charge, but I doubt it. What is that, does he say? He just says connector. I don't know, but I definitely need to plug that in properly when I put this back together. Okay, so yeah, I'm not quite sure why this didn't work, but we can pop this thing off. We can unplug this guy, maybe unplug this guy, unplug this guy, maybe. Come on, cool. Carefully lift this little latch and pull this little one out, pop this off pull this try and pull this guy out i'm oh there we go okay and then pull this latch up and pull out why are you not coming out coming out coming out there we go pull this one boom pull this out and is that all anything else now oh, there's more on this side i think nintendo should have you know maybe added a few more connectors I don't know if there's enough for the Wii U gamepad. And then, of course, we still got to unscrew it. Duh. We got one, two, three screws that I see. I don't see any more. I'm kind of shocked that there's only three for this board because Nintendo loves to put too many screws in, as you saw by the 10 for the outside shell. But we should hopefully be able to remove that. Cool. And a bunch of connectors later, I should hopefully not... We get to put that in. Don't know where it goes, though. Just fell out. Anyways, yours will obviously look different unless you somehow did the same thing I did. But it's going to be pretty much the same process. We do need to pop that off. Just pop that little piece of plastic off. And you're going to have four connections or six connections on the back here that need to be reflowed so you can yoink your connector out. The way I like to do it, I like to get a little bit of height little bit of space underneath the connector. I like to take my iron to about 330 Celsius because this is probably going to be unleaded solder and we're desoldering. So we want to use a lot more heat, not a lot more heat, a little more heat than normal. 330 is a good balance. And then of course, load it up with flux. And all I'm going to do is get my tweezers in the port and I'm going to heat up this pin. You know what? I'm going to add a little bit of fresh flux or fresh solder, excuse me, to these things. And then I just want to keep heating up all four of those pieces. I'm going to get a slightly more different grip on it here. And I'm just going to heat up all of these and get my tweezers even more under there. Yep, just pop that side out. And then I'm going to get a nice solid grip on the tweezer or on the port as I heat up all of those again and pull it out. Boom, done. Then I'm going to get out some solder wick. I like goot wick. And we're going to remove all of the solder here. Sometimes you might have to flip over the board and go over the same spot on the other side. Or it's just going to be super stubborn. And I guess we'll use a little more flux. Or it's going to continue to be stubborn. Since this area is still being stubborn, I'm going to clean it up a little bit. Get rid of this uh, burnt flux. See if that helps at all. But I'm going to add a little bit more flux, some fresh flux. And then I'm going to add some fresh solder, just a little bit. And then I'm hoping that the new solder will attract the old solder. And it does not seem to be doing that. Awesome. That's fine. I really don't think it's a huge issue because we're going to take our new board. And since we have 
the uh, two pegs on the right here that are open, we can stick the two pegs through the open slots. And it's going to be a little hard to hold this. So I'm going to grab it with my tweezers like that. And then I'm going to try and get a little bit of solder to stick to those. I don't have like any solder on my iron right now. I just don't want that USB-C port to fall out like that. And it looks like it did secure it. Yes, it's at an angle, but we'll fix that in a second. So we're going to do the same thing. Add some fresh solder to both of these pads that we tried to remove from earlier and then I'm going to blow the solder on both of those and try and pinch the other half of the USB-C port into that slot. That was horrible but I got it. Hopefully your Wii U gamepad solder will actually get sucked up unlike mine being a freaking mess. Dude I hate desoldering. Anyways we'll flip it over and not the most lined up, but I'm just going to deal with it. So I'll zoom back in for this. There are two pads right here, and we need to connect the uh, gold at the end of this ribbon cable to those gold pads. And it shouldn't be too hard. It just didn't line up perfectly, which is a little frustrating. But if uh, your solder is nicer to you, then it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm just going to try and lift the ribbon cable so I can add some solder to both of these pads. And then I can add some solder to both of these points on the ribbon cable. And honestly, it should just be as simple as doing that and doing that. It doesn't need to be perfect as long as it's not bridging to anything else, which it doesn't seem like it is. It seems good. So I was just gonna like bend it a little bit, give it a little hump. But when I try and lift that end of the ribbon cable, it doesn't lift. So. It should be good. It's just a little hard to tell. It doesn't really look like it's soldered, but it is. I'm just going to clean it up a little bit since I just messed it up a little bit. Okay. There is honestly a chance that this just doesn't work at all because, again, I had a USB C port in this and it didn't charge that way. But <sighs> I've been able to get away with it because there's another way to charge it with the gamepad holder. Now we can, well, clean this area up a little bit so we don't get a bunch of uh, old flux and crap on our gamepad. Then we can put it back together, which also before I forget, we should reinstall this thing. I don't remember exactly how it went on like that. And then we can put this board down. Make sure you're not covering any of the ribbon cables that we unplugged before, because then it'll be pretty hard to plug it back in. There's so many cables trying to ruin my day. It also help if I put it in the right way, but still, it, the cables are not helping. Glad I noticed that before I got too deep. Okay, um, this is covered up. Just gotta get these ones out. Oh man, probably shouldn't use metal tweezers to fish those out or mess with them at all. Because you don't want to accidentally break it oh man get that one locked down and it's really just plugging everything back in so I, I think i'm just going to time lapse through this because it's got to be super boring content um where does this slider go it goes in here and i think now it's just plugging this in as we lock it down oh wait shoot i need to screw those three screws in i don't exactly remember where all three of those go and should be able to just drop it in like that. Swap to the tri-wing. I might as well get the two harder ones first. And I think I'm just going to leave all those uh, screw covers off. So it's just not worth it to me. Plug that in. Man, you'd think that they would like have a bigger battery for this because what is all this extra space for if not a battery? I mean, I don't think the Wii U gamepad had a bad battery life. I don't know. I hardly played it. And I didn't get one until well into the Switch lifetime. We're all screwed in there. And I have had to charge it via this charging cradle since I tried installing that USB-C port before. So again, this might not work, but I did it correctly. It's just very possible that I fried something when trying the original USB-C port. I have no idea what this port is for. If you know, let me know in the comments. Okay, let's find a USB-C cable. 
Okay, here's a USB-C 3.0 cable, and it's like a higher speed data cable because it's for like SSDs. Plug it into my computer because it's the most successful USB port I've got. And hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just think of the lights coming on in Christmas vacation. Sweet. I don't know why this didn't work before, but I have USB C'd my first thing. It's not true. I've just done it so many times with the SP, and I've done a couple of DS lights at this point with a USB C port like this one. So I don't know what I did wrong initially, but theoretically, I should be able to charge this with any USB C cable. In fact, I'm going to try one more USB C cable. I'm going to try a C to C cable that has like a fancy high powered brick and see if I break it. Okay, here we go. It's barely going to reach, but hallelujah. Let's go. That was super frustrating to install. Not Giltessa's fault at all. But I am uh, very, very happy that this works, even though I'll probably still be charging it with the uh, cradle. We'll see. <laughs> I don't know which one I'm going to do next. If you have a request, uh, leave it in the comments down below. I've got stuff for all of the DSIs, 2DS, 3DS, PS Vita, PSP, GameCube, Super Nintendo, original NES, the Wii, like the actual Wii and Wii U consoles. Probably going to do the Wii or the Wii U next is what I'm thinking. And I've got a couple micro USB to USB-C adapters. All right, bye.